Hey there, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about specifically some topics that I've seen come up quite a bit in my Newbie Overlanders Facebook group. Uh, if you haven't joined that group or haven't heard of it, it's awesome. You should check the link in the description down below to join if you're on Facebook. But there are a ton of awesome new people in there, people that are just getting into overlanding, which has been great. So there's been a ton of great questions coming up in there. But one that I see more often than others is, you know, hey, I'm new to this. I don't know how to meet people, how to like find locations in my area, how to get out and like become friends with people that have this same hobby, right? And I know from my experience that none of my friends in normal life, quote unquote, uh, really understand what overlanding is, right? They don't get it. They don't they're definitely not into it enough to be building out a truck or, you know, trying to like go on really long trips and sweating in the summer and stuff like that or freezing in the winter. So, you know, if, if you are one of those folks, if you are newer to overlanding and you just don't have any friends yet that are into overlanding or the overlanding lifestyle, if you will, um, then this podcast is for you, right? I'm going to talk through some ideas, some things that I've seen that work, some things that I've used that work, some newer things that are kind of coming out and becoming more mainstream now that may help you find people that are into the lifestyle, into overlanding, into the hobby that you can meet and how to meet them and how to become friends with them and how to kind of grow your interest in overlanding and get out there and explore more. So if you want to learn more about that, stay tuned. All right, guys, so as I mentioned in the intro, today I'm talking about how to find people that are into overlanding, how to make friends with people that are into overlanding, how to kind of get your feet wet and just get started. If you're a little bit nervous about that thing, I'm gonna give you some specific tips on how I've kind of done it and what I've seen that's worked for other people, and hopefully it will help you, you know, get out there a little bit more and explore. So let's start with Facebook. Okay, Facebook is the big thing. Everybody is on Facebook except the younger folks. So if you're younger and you're watching this and you don't have Facebook, I understand. But there are a lot of Facebook groups and the Facebook groups have kind of replaced the olden days forums, if you will. Forums still exist, but I feel like they've kind of died off quite a bit with the invention of Facebook groups. So similar to my newbie overlanders group that I mentioned, there are, you know, vehicle specific groups, there are overlanding specific groups, there are overlanding with your vehicle specific group. So that's kind of my first tip is if you want to find people that are into the hobby to make friends with, to learn from, to maybe go on trips with and stuff, go search for your vehicle slash overlanding on Facebook. So for example, you know, I'm in like Nissan Frontier overlanding. I'm in Nissan Frontier. I'm in, you know, Xterra Nation. I'm in all these different like Nissan specific groups so that I can learn about, you know, maintenance fixes modifications and things like that for my vehicle but then also get to know people that are into the overlanding side of things and uh, maybe in my area right so that is a good example of how you could do that search for your vehicle search for overlanding um, another way to do that on facebook groups is to look for like state specific or even region specific overlanding groups so like for example i'm part of a group called midwest overlanders because i'm in indiana right so midwest overlanders is a great big group indiana overlanders is another one there's a group that i'm in called ohio kentucky indiana xterras okix again people that are into nissans that are in ohio kentucky indiana you know that's it's that's how you find it so go on facebook search groups you can also google it and you can see if there are forums and stuff out there sometimes those forums are pretty active so if if that helps you know for nissan folks there's the new x.org which is where xterra folks go and then there's the nissan frontier club i think is the frontier one um but you can find forums like that or you can find facebook groups for your vehicle or for your area um you know if you're more into like the backpacking side of things same thing right search facebook groups for f backpacking you know, ultralight backpacking, whatever type of backpacking you're into, whatever type of camping you're into. There's an Indiana camping group. There's, I mean, there are just a ton of them out there. So literally if you throw in the keywords of like your area and or your vehicle or what type of camping you want to do, you should be able to find folks that are local in your area that you can at least kind of get to know a little bit online and learn from and maybe get spots from, maybe get tips from them, that sort of thing. Before you go on your first trip, that would help. And 
if they're local to you, again, you could meet people and, and become friends with them. And then that could be a way to, you know, go with someone that you've sort of at least talked to a little bit online and know a little bit about versus just going out on your own or, or you know, going out with strangers. So again, Facebook groups, forums, that's kind of my first tip if you're looking to meet people that are into overlanding and not in a dating way, but just in like a hangout type of way um, to get more into the hobby. Same with like places and locations and spots. All right, so tip number two. This one is one that is a little bit newer and actually it's been a little bit controversial online, which I find kind of interesting. Guided overlanding trip services or companies. So, you know, and I'm a little biased here because I know uh, Cody, the gentleman that runs Wannabe Overland, we actually met like a year and a half ago on an overlanding trip, super nice guy. But so he uh, maybe like eight, nine months ago came up with the idea because he was really good at making routes and like kind of taking people out and he was kind of doing that thing where he said, you know what, I, I enjoy this quite a bit. I'd rather just do this, you know, than like work a full-time job. So he started a company called Wannabe Overland. And basically what they do is, you know, they take you out. They, you know, you meet up in a place, they take you on some some guided like trips, tours. They, they have these routes that they've developed um, through like national forest lands or, you know, normal old roads but that are off-road and so they have this whole thing figured out right like the and the cool thing about it is especially if you're a beginner one they're insured and they're a regular like organized business so you have some like some like coverage there right like you feel a little bit better about it it's not like you went out in the woods and met up with strangers right you go with this this licensed and insured company um and then they take you around, right? They, they sort of guide you. And from what I've heard, I've been on a couple of the trips they, and I've seen it. They, you know, they get on the radios and they talk to everybody. They give you really good instructions. Even if you're newer, like you're not going to ever feel like lost or, or get, uh, you know, out of shape. They've had instances like in the winter, they led a trip, I think last winter and it got pretty icy and, and slick, but they very cautiously got everybody through any of the sort of bad conditions and stuff. So again, you've got some people that are sort of trained that know their stuff that are, you know, uh, there to kind of make sure that you have a good trip. They introduce people on the radio. They ask people to talk about their rigs and what got them into overlanding, that kind of thing. So you get to know people, you get to become friends. Um, I went on a trip with them like a month and a half ago and it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. There were all these new folks there that, you know, a lot of which had never really been or only been on like a couple camping trips and things like that. And uh, just to sit around the fire and kind of hear their experiences and get to know them and get to talk to them was, was really, really cool. So, and I know from that, like, I've got friends out of that, right? Like I've got other new people that I didn't know before that trip that now I know and I could, you know, hit up on Facebook Messenger and say, hey, do you want to come out and go camping next weekend? So, um, you know, something like that is a great way to get started. I guess the controversial piece of that is that the, they charge for their services, right? And that's that seems to be controversial for some reason. People kind of seem to freak out a little bit and they're like, oh, these roads are free. Why do I have to pay to go? And it's like, you don't, you don't have to pay to go on the roads. What you're paying for is the service, right? What you're paying for is to be led around, to have someone else do all the route planning for you. You're just there for the, the fun of it. Oftentimes they'll do like classes or things like that. So like you could learn about recovery. Um, I know they had this one that was like a three trip series for newbies that was like part one was like the camping side of things where they would kind of take you out, kind of walk you through their gear and kind of help you decide what may be best for setting up your rig. So it kind of helps you set up your rig. And the second trip was they went to like an off-road park and they kind of taught some, some lessons on how to get used to your vehicle, get comfortable with your vehicle, how to be in like off camber situations, how to climb up steeper hills, how to go over rocks, how to place your tires, how to work with a spotter, that kind of thing. And then the third trip kind of combined it all where they put it all together and you went on an actual trip. I think they went to, or they're going to Kentucky. I'm not sure. I'm, I just kind of saw it in passing and I was like, that's a really cool idea. Like again, when I started this four or five years ago, I went out with some random people that I'd met on the, on Facebook from Midwest Overlanders. And luckily they were really cool people and we had a great time and, and it worked out well. But imagine if we hadn't, right? What if we hadn't hit it off? What if, uh, not to say that they were going to murder me or anything like that, but what if like we just hadn't gotten along or hadn't had a good time or what if they were, you know, really crazy wheelers and they got me stuck in a mud pit and left me or, you know what I mean? Like you just don't know. You know, especially when you're just starting out though, I think something like that is just a great sort of like uh, tool to kind of get you started and get your feet firmly planted under you so that then you can start to take some of your own trips, right? You may not need to go on paid overlanding trips forever. Although again, there are a lot of people that buy like the year long pass so they can go on all the trips with the wannabe folks, right? And the reason for that is just because of the camaraderie, right? Like they're kind of forming like a groups of people, like um, 
friends that just get together and go hang out. It's kind of like Northology Adventures, uh, Cindy Pope and all them, you know, she goes out and does trips. She's doing one with her Patreon uh, people here before too long, like in August, I think. And uh, it's awesome, right? Like it's just really neat. They're building like communities, little baby communities basically, where people can become friends and then go and hang out with each other and go on trips over and over again. So anyways, that is an option as well. Obviously it's optional. If, if you have a problem with paying someone to put in their time and service and, and sort of to lead you around and do all the legwork to plan the trips, then you don't have to pay for them. It's fine. And then my third tip here, if you are newer to overlanding and you kind of want to learn more about it, you want to meet people in your area, you want to find spots in your area. One thing that I think is often overlooked and not really talked about that much, at least not on YouTube videos that I've seen, is hitting up YouTubers. So you know, it's, it's kind of funny to me, like when I go to like the more expo or like these expos and stuff, like sometimes people are like, oh wow, you're all things overlanding, which is not a, this is not me saying that I'm famous or anything. It's shocking to me when people come up to me and, and actually know who I am or ask me if I'm all things overlanding. Um, but like I, for real guys, I am a, just a dude, right? Like I'm a guy that lives in Indiana and I enjoy making this content for you guys. I like going out in my truck and camping. I like going on longer trips. This weekend I'm on a three day trip. So, you know, I mean, I'm just a normal guy. So when people hit me up, now some of them, not all of them, are assholes, right? Like, it's possible. Everybody's different. So not everybody's just a normal person, but it can't hurt to ask, right? So I, whenever someone sends me an email or messages me through Facebook, I reply to every single one of them. And I try and be as helpful as I possibly can. So I recommend doing that. And I've done that to other YouTubers, right? Like uh, Chad Boyd, who owns Overland Addict. I built a whole relationship with him through YouTube, basically. I hit him up because I saw his videos. I was like, dude, I really like your videos. I think they're really cool. And, uh, you know, what about this? What about that? And I asked him questions and stuff. But, like, just stuff like that, right? Like, these overlanding YouTubers, for the most part, are just normal people, right? Like, it's YouTube. It's not the movies or an actual like tv show right so like we're all just normal people doing this kind of for fun some of us for work you know someday maybe for me but um but like we're just normal people so we oftentimes will have a good amount of knowledge on an area on a topic on a on nissan's on you know whatever you may want to know so i get hit up all the time right now from people that are like what suspension are you running what did you do for this what do you think about that and I love it. I'm happy to help you guys out. And the same goes with when you're newer and you want to find spots or you want to find groups, you know, hit up your favorite YouTubers. Send them a message and say, hey, here's where I am. Do you know anybody in that area? Do you know any coffee and rigs and coffees? Do you know any, like, how do I go out and meet people? Um, that kind of thing. And the YouTubers oftentimes will have some sort of, like, geographical knowledge and or subject matter expertise on like a type of vehicle or a type of overlanding or a type of modification. Um, so, I, you know, don't be scared of that. Definitely hit them up. What's the worst that happens? They don't reply, right? And that has happened to me many times. I've hit up many YouTubers and maybe heard back from like 60% of them, but the 60% I've heard back from were awesome. So just try it. So my final tip is uh, what I just kind of mentioned a second ago in the third tip, rigs and coffee. These, at least where I live, are pretty few and far between. I, there aren't really any in Indiana. I'm actually working to set one up right now, so I'm hoping to get that going in the next few months. Worst case, maybe early next year, um, because I would love to get something set up where, you know, folks that are into overlanding can go and hang out. I've been going to Cars and Coffee, and it's a bunch of sports cars and stuff, and then my truck, which is fine, and it's it's cool. It's still fun, and I love. I'm a car guy too, so I like the cars, anyways. But. Um, for people just specifically that are into like overlanding, off-roading, camping, that kind of thing, where we can all go and like look at each other's rigs, talk about modifications, that kind of thing. So if you have those in your area, you know, Google rigs and coffee and just see what you can find or ask your favorite YouTuber or ask people in your local Facebook groups. Like all these things are not mutually exclusive, right? You can use these things together to find um, other folks that are into the hobby or other places that you can go so look for a local rigs and coffee find one that is that is active and go to them just go and hang out introduce yourself walk around say hi meet people with you know similar interests to yourself and that's a great way to make some friends and find people that are into overlanding as well um, so again i hope that those tips were helpful for you um, I know it's been like five years now since I started doing this, so now I feel like I, I've got a, an okay handle on a lot of the things, how to find stuff. I'm also perfectly fine going solo, like right now I'm by myself. Um, camped out all last night, slept in a hammock, it was great. Um, but if you want to go with people too, or if you're new and, and you're nervous about it, like I definitely didn't want to come out here by myself the first time because I didn't know what to do. I, I was like, do I pay? 
how do I find a spot? Which ones are okay to take? Like there's a lot of questions that you kind of have to find answers to before you get comfortable enough to just like go out into a national forest and like camp by yourself for the night. So again, hopefully these tips were helpful. Hopefully that helps you, you know, if you're newer, get your feet wet and get into overlanding. Of course, post up in the comments down below. Let me know if you have any questions. You know, like I said, I'm a YouTuber, but I'm 100% available and happy to help you guys. So post up and let me know what you want to know, what you, what questions you have, and I'm happy to answer every single one of them. In the description below, there are, of course, links to my Facebook page, uh, Instagram page, got a Patreon page, we got a Discord, and we all chat in that. So that's pretty cool. If you want to join a little tiny niche group of overlanders and talk to them, join the Patreon page and hop into the Discord. Um, and then, of course, the newbie overlanders group that I mentioned, that thing is totally free to join. It's on Facebook. Just hit me up and I will let you in as soon as I'm done camping. Um, but so yeah, I am wherever you guys want to hang out, right? Again, I, my goal with this is to be informational, to be educational, helpful, and to help other people kind of find this amazing hobby that I've found that I love doing so much so that I'm building a truck to do it, right? Like, but so it is kind of life changing. And I do really enjoy like, I, I can't tell you, it's been kind of a stressful week. And now I'm out here and it's so peaceful and calm. You can hear the wind rustling through the trees. There have been frogs, you know, making noises all night, which was kind of nice to fall asleep to. And it's just great to be away from, you know, the stress of your normal daily work life, right? So again, I hope this was helpful. If it was, click that like button if you're on YouTube. If you're on the podcast, leave a five-star review if you don't mind. I, I would really appreciate it. Um, but again, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys next week.